After the murder of George Floyd in 2020 and the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement, children and young people in Scotland met with the Deputy First Minister to make their voices heard and share their lived experiences of racism. Young people explained that Teachers should think about how to better reflect black and minority ethnic history and experience, as well as the importance of tackling racism in society today. From this meeting, the Scottish Government set up a race equality and anti-racism and education programme with a focus on four areas. One, education leadership and professional learning. Two, curriculum reform. Three, diversity in the teaching profession and education workforce. Hmm. And four, racism and racist incidents. Listening to the experiences of children, young people and the guidance of the Programme Board, Education Scotland worked with partners to create professional learning for Scotland's educators to build their racial literacy. That means making a learning programme for teachers and practitioners to build their anti-racist skills and to increase their awareness of the impact of race on the learners, families and communities they support. The first version of the Building Racial Literacy Programme started in January 2022. It has been designed by partners with a strong influence in education and a wealth of anti-racist knowledge, including the Scottish Association of Minority Ethnic Educators, the Coalition for Racial Equality and Rights, the Scottish Development Education Centres, Third Generation Project and others. That's quite a lot of organisations you can see in the screen there. Hey. A few of which I'm obviously aware of myself, probably some you're aware of, hey, such as the... EIS, the Teaching Union in Scotland, Education Scotland of course, Scott Deck, the GTC, General Teaching Council, the, the Scottish Government of course, um, same with two E's at the end, uh, that's that group run by Kachida Mohammed, the uh, Pakistani woman that's got a squint face. So this is the latest uh, episode of the anti-racist escapade that seems to be steamrolling on ahead in Scotland, unchallenged of course, and relatively going under the radar eh, for a large part, um, which I'll come on to actually, well it's literally going under the radar in terms of um, they seem to be hiding a lot of their information unless you're officially registered to see it, freedom of information request that somebody put in, eh, I was reading through it earlier on, I've still got the tab open like... But um, uh, the purpose of this video really is to just cover this video and again kind of reiterate points that I've addressed before, maybe go over some additional things that I've uh, come across uh, through the duration of, you know, delving into this shit again. I'm getting a bit fed up of the anti-racist rhetoric that seems to become commonplace in Scotland these days, especially when you take the term anti-racist and I know that goes without saying, I'm not going to insult anybody's intelligence by, you know, delving into a, a deep dive explanation as to why it's misleading but when you hear the term anti-racist you assume that these people are just opposing racism the same way as when you hear the term anti-fascist you just assume that these people are opposing fascism pretty misleading terms when you really look beneath the surface of what they actually stand for and the same is true you get your first indicator within the first minute of this video that there's a lot more that meets the eye when it comes to the term anti-racist because it starts off by talking about george fucking floyd two years on well, is it, even if the guy did die due to uh, racism, it's got F all to do with Scotland, but for some strange reason they've managed to jump on that gravy train and two years on we're still talking about him in Scotland. Um, but they then talk about the fact that some of the youth in Scotland during that time period um, met with the Deputy First Minister to discuss uh, their experiences of racism. And the first example that gets brought up in terms of an issue that the children or the youth raised um, was that they want teachers to think about how to better reflect BAME history and experience as well as the importance of tackling racism in society today. So you go to meet the Deputy First Minister to discuss your uh, dealings with racism and the first point of contention that you raise is the fact that teachers currently at present do not better, do not think enough, I assume, about how to better reflect BAME history and experience. So, you know, I've gone through so much of this anti-racist shit before, and I know that for the large part, I kind of am preaching to the choir in terms of these videos. There's not really much more that I can do in this front, eh, apart from, yet again, bring attention to the fact that this shit's going on behind the scenes. But even that first sentence alone, you know, kind of eh, detracting away from my original point for a, for a second here, but 
when you hear that, when you read that term there, teachers should think about how to better reflect BAME history. So currently at present, there's not enough BAME history in, in, incorporated in the, in the curriculum in academia into history lessons, for example. And that, for some strange reason, seems to be tied under the umbrella of anti-racism and racial inequality. I mean, it's Scotland. Scotland is historically white. It's always been white. The demography of Scotland has always been fucking white. So people that come from here now, in the modern day, from other parts of the world, naturally they're not going to share the same history as us. Naturally they're not going to have the same uh, ties to this land. Naturally their history is elsewhere. <laughs> so naturally their history is going to be excluded from our curriculum because they're not from here. You're going to, if you live in Scotland, it stands to reason you're going to get Scottish history, but no, that's an issue. That's an issue that needs to change. Prioritising Scottish history and British history in schools. Oh, no, 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 we need to talk about the history of all the BAMES over the world. The point I was initially getting at there was the fact that that's got absolutely no relevance to approaching the, first, the Deputy First Minister to talk about your experiences of racism. Why has that been brought up? It's got fuck all to do with racism. But according to the anti-racists, it technically does. It does. From this meeting, the Scottish Government set up a race equality and anti-racism and education programme. So there you go, there's another example of the government, or members of the government anyway, meeting with members of our youth to discuss issues, pretending that they give a shit about what the youth have to say when the reality of the matter is the youth inevitably parrot points that, eh, or address issues that the government already had premeditated. So in this instance, they had plans to start implementing anti-racist education. So lo and behold, we just get the children to come forward and proclaim that that's what they want to see. The government then go away and pretend that they've taken what's been said into consideration when it comes to future policy decisions. When the reality of the matter is, as I said, it was already in the pipeline anyway. So it's this false sense of empowerment yet again, politicising children in the process, of course. But nonetheless, so due to that meeting, they then established an anti-racism uh, or they, they established a, a race equality and anti-racism program going forward. And the four main points in this program are as followed. Education leadership and professional learning. Then we have curriculum reform at number two. Followed by diversity in the teaching profession and education workforce. Finishing off with racism and racist incidents. So bear in mind, as I said at the beginning of this video, anti-racism, you would assume they're opposing racism. So first, and so above all else, the only point that should really be addressed here, the only point that should be taken forward, and the only point that this video should be talking about, is this point here, addressing racism and racist incidents within school. Quite frankly, how the other three points have managed to get incorporated alongside this, as points that need to be addressed going forward, is anybody's guess. But as I said, in this day and age, the umbrella term for anti-racism and the umbrella term for race equality slash inequality encompasses a hell of a lot more than you would ordinarily think. <laughs> so, and I quite frankly, <laughs> what well, as I've pointed out, so many videos that I've made on this because it seems to be one of the most common talking points that gets it uh, raised uh, in every single anti-racist uh, video that comes out, any document, publication, you name it. There's always reference to the fact that currently at present there's not enough black and brown teachers in Scotland. And that needs to be addressed. That's a fundamental issue. That's a, that's a barrier on the road to achieving race equality. Educators are learning together how to be anti-racist. They work in nurseries, early learning and childcare settings, primary and secondary schools, third sector organisation, local authorities and universities. And I found that relatively alarming as well. The narrator the, the, the said um, that they're now working, or they've got educators placed in certain nurseries across Scotland, certain primary schools across Scotland. I mean, it went without saying that inevitably this is going to happen anyway. Uh, they start to shoehorn in their so-called experts, their so-called academics, into teaching pr uh, roles, and immediately, <laughs> right off the bat, they start promoting this fucking cancer. You know, but nursery settings, primary school settings, no pushback. And if they didn't release this video, to be honest, the vast majority of people, including myself, would be none the wiser that this was actually happening. What? Well, why are they in nurseries? Why are they in primary schools? And why is there a deafening silence across Scotland in regards to this shit? Okay, granted, I give the benefit of the doubt in terms of the fact that in this instance, this is relatively new. This only came out today. This program apparently has been in the, the works for... Uh, since January time, January 2022. Um, I tried to find the document that they were referring to earlier on in the video, but 
I don't think it exists. Or if it does, it's hidden behind some a uh, register-only service. Nonetheless. To make people working in education less race evasive, that means that educators don't avoid talking about race. Instead of ignoring racism, they feel confident challenging racism and helping those who experience it. On the programme, we've been listening to children and young people's experiences of race in Scottish education, finding out what they would like to see us doing differently, learning about our own racial identity and how this might impact our teaching practice day to day, sharing good practices and ideas and planning our own individual anti-racist action plans. I hadn't imagined some of the experiences of people of colour. I was quite taken aback about how I hadn't considered certain things, such as how a child of colour might feel in a class of white people. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. You know, so much of the issues that these people proclaim are prevalent around, in, in and around society. I would actually make the argument that a lot was in their head. And again, this is another example of that. <laughs> if they've got issues being in a classroom that's predominantly made up of white people, if they've got an issue with being in a classroom that's predominantly lacking in people that look like them, maybe that's adding to their mental torment, so to speak. But fundamentally, it's irrelevant how a child feels in a classroom full of white people if they're black. You know, you can you can sit and you can listen to how they feel about the situation, but the reality of the matter is, it doesn't mean that they're any less. It doesn't mean that they're any better off or any worse off in any shape or form. All it means fundamentally is that they're a minority in a classroom. <laughs> but again, this is one of their uh, go-to examples as to why we need to see more black and brown teachers, so these kids feel more at home, so these these kids feel more represented, etc. I mean, the reality of the matter is, they're minorities. What the fuck do you expect? The fuck do you expect? Some of these issues that these people profess can really be attributed to the fact that they're simply minorities. And these issues will dissipate as their percentage in the population increases. <laughs> but do you think the rhetoric will dissipate? Well, oh, fuck. The programme is also an opportunity for teachers who experience racism to connect and find support. The most valuable lesson that I have learned so far is that I am not alone. I may be the only person of colour in my school, Ugh. but I'm part of this huge community of educators who want to make the right change for the young people in our care. It's funny that. So let's just take this little segment here. I don't know if this is anecdotal made up or if somebody's actually been quoted here. Right? But this individual is the only brown or black person in their, a, their school, apparently. But they also claim to be a part of a huge community of educators. So presumably this individual is a teacher or an aspiring teacher, right? So they're an aspiring teacher and or a teacher in a school that's all white bar them, but yet they still want to implement changes that they proclaim uh, are the right choices, the right changes for the young people in your care. So the, the young people in your care in this instance, if we take this person as a, as a real life uh, individual, the people in your care, the children in your care, the young people in your care are all Scottish or, 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 or are all white. But yet you still want to implement anti-racist education. Who's this really fucking for? I think is the question that needs to be posed here. Every educator on the programme is making an anti-racist action plan for their schools and settings. These are some of the actions that participants have identified for themselves so far. <sighs> Engage with families and beginning with their experiences and values, get to know them. Put anti-racism on my school improvement plan. Put an anti-racism on the school improvement plan, of course. Now again though, no. anti-racism is not what you would assume it would it would mean when you hear the term anti-racism. <laughs> no, 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 no. First and foremost, racism in their eyes and the, their ideology professes. In fact, I'll get out the anti-racist educator. That's the perfect website to give you all the definitions. A website that I haven't visited in some time, but it's more relevant than ever in this instance because one of the women that's uh, one of the co-authors or co-owners of that website, uh, she's one of the ones that's uh, fundamentally responsible for this uh, racial literacy program that's uh, been implemented at present. Melina something. But uh, aye. There's a plethora of definitions on the anti-racist educator's website, or there used to be anyway. But from memory, uh, 
they say that racism obviously is prejudice plus power, so you can't be racist to white people, of course. Um, they also claim that racism is not just what you would assume it would mean if you were to open up a dictionary and read the definition. No, 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 not in modern day rainbow unicorn land. Now, in fact, it's a system, it's the structures, it's the structural systemic structures of oppressive, oppressive barriers and whatnot. You know, the usual bullshit, evidence racist, microaggressions are rife. Racial slurs and racial microaggressions. <laughs> microaggressions, I mean, it's that is fucking that is laughable that they unironically bring up microaggressions on a daily basis. Move mindfully through the school and wider community. Not entirely sure what that's supposed to mean. The development of a more inclusive anti-racist curriculum. <laughs> Buddying up with colleagues to work on this. Anti-racist club for staff and pupils. Oh, oh yeah, sounds riveting. More diversity and anti-racist discussions in meetings. <laughs> you know, there's such so many times that I've listened to some of these individuals speak, eh, or so many of the things that I've read in the past over the years from these anti-racists in Scotland. Not just it's not limited to Scotland, but just in this instance, eh, you know, because it's them that. I, I tend to read if I decide to read any of their shit at all. Um, you know, it's like they've got an attention. They're, they're desperate to be the centre of attention. It doesn't matter how much attention you give them. It doesn't matter how much pandering is pre provided towards them or provided for them. It doesn't matter how much you bootlick. It doesn't matter how much you grovel. It doesn't matter how much you uh, take what they've said on board and begin to implement policies, etc. on the behest of them. It's never enough. So they want more diversity in anti-racist discussions and meetings, you know. So the meetings at present, <laughs> there's not enough talk about anti-racism. There's not enough talk about the things that they want to talk about in meetings, you know. <laughs> Fuck, like, of course, then we obviously need more diversity. But, you know, it has to be a specific kind of quote-unquote diversity. Again, no, obviously, a little hot take for myself, but everybody knows at this point. I'm not preaching to the choir to insult intelligence, but it just goes to show the malevolence of it. When they're talking about more diversity, what do they mean? Well, they obviously mean less white, you know? So, again, they have an issue with things being too white at present in a majority white country. Imagine my fucking shock. But, um, <laughs> you know, moreover, it has to be a specific type of diversity, of course, because we couldn't have a board meeting or we couldn't have a meeting in general um, with an allocated lot of time to talk about anti-racism and the pander. Um, off. We couldn't have a couple of beams in there that were opposed to the anti-racist rhetoric and the ideology. Oh, no, 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 no. They have to be beams that sing from the same hymn sheet, you know. <laughs> and if, if, yeah, I love this this point, though, eh? because it really just goes to show that this is more about being anti-white and it's more about having an issue with the fact that things are currently at present too white than it is about anything else. Because we are also told simultaneously that we're all one, right? And there's no differences, etc., uh, you know, we're, we're the human race, all that fucking namby pamby white white BS, right? Well, if that's the case, then if the whole board meeting, the whole meeting in general, this hypothetical meeting was made up of white individuals, should that not matter? What, what can they not do that a meeting that had a couple of beams in the room could do? Or is the issue really fundamentally about the fact it's just the percentage of whites in the room? Address a school-wide anti-racism policy. <laughs> Become better informed and listen to my pupils. Person Become better informed, I... Yeah. Personal actions for me include the need to allocate time to read and develop my racial literacy. My racial literacy. What do they mean by that? What do they mean? You need to know all there is to know about anti-racism. You need to know about all the new and improved definitions. And all the entirety, all the context required. These sessions have demonstrated that I have a very basic understanding of racism. To make positive changes, I need to upskill and educate myself. <laughs> this will need to start with a period of reflection. Oh, is that right? You know, I have a very basic understanding of racism. But they, 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 they're they the experts, of course, you know. They've got their PhDs in anti-racism. To be back in the day, gender studies that people would point to and laugh when it came to poking fun at all the leftist uh, courses that people could take in universities. But I would say that any course that uh, people, these people undertake that has anything to do with anti-racism is arguably more useless than uh, any gender study related. <laughs> but the worst part about it is though, they go into these studies and they come out the other side of it all of a sudden assuming that they're experts in the field. I've spoken with my management about the programme and I've been more active in creating opportunities to discuss race and cultural diversity. I definitely feel empowered. You feel empowered, do you? Oh. Only the beginning. 
the Building Racial Literacy Programme will grow and be offered to more teachers and practitioners so that anti-racism is a baseline value for every educator in Scotland. Tell and that right there is one of the two fundamental things that I think are the most alarming about this whole thing. The fact that educators at present are undertaking this course or this programme and some of these individuals are placed in nursery settings and primary school settings. It's bad enough that they're placed anywhere, but in settings with children as young as that, that's bad. But then obviously concluding at the end of the video there that they, this is just the beginning and they wish to see this program extended going forward. And with the endorsement of the SP, etc., it stands to reason that that will become the case. Mentioned earlier on, this is the uh, the Freedom of Information request that I managed to stumble across. Um, information request and response under the Freedom of Information Act, right? Uh, information on the Scottish Government's Building Racial Literacy Programme as follows. What is the content of the programme? Who created the programme? Who is evaluating the programme? Is the programme to be rolled out to all schools and if so, to whom? If the programme is to be rolled out to all, is it compulsory and if so, for who? How much has the programme cost so far and what is it projected to cost? So the content of the program, Building Racial Literacy aims to empower educators to identify and implement anti-racist behaviours and processes in their everyday practice. These are the program outcomes. To build racial literacy in particular, to start learning about the nuances of racism and anti-racism with the language to name it, and to build the skills to continue this learning long after the program is over. To begin developing the skills, confidence and resilience to engage in racial dialogue and develop and to develop sorry a personalised action plan to lead anti-racist change. The programme content is delivered live via online webinars and the rest of the programme content is shared on the online programme area that is restricted to the registered participants. But isn't that interesting? That members of the public, unless they are registered to whatever website in question they're on about or referencing there, you can't just go and access what they're talking about. You can't just go and access uh, the information and the resources, etc. That are, these people are, are like, are presumably, I should say, sharing amongst themselves. They seem to be working in somewhat secrecy. Hmm. Who created the program? The prototype program has been designed in partnership with members of the School Leadership and Professional uh, Learning Works team of the Race Equality uh, and Anti-Racist Action Plan, or education program, I should say, as well as anti-racist organisations and training providers, including uh, the Coalition for Racial Equality and Rights, uh, Scottish Association for Minority Ethnic Educators, Scott Deck, Third Generation product, uh, Project, sorry, and the University of West of Scotland, and Education Scotland, of course, goes without fucking saying. The Race Equality and Anti-Racism in Education programme itself, of course, uh, was established in response to the significant amount of correspondence received by the Deputy First Minister as part of the BLM movement, which uh, was sort of rejuvenated on the back of George Floyd, let's not forget. And one of the recommendations, as well as uh, made by the COVID-19 uh, ethnicity expert group, seeking to include the teaching of black history in the curriculum. So, oh, lo and behold, how convenient is that the BAME youth that went and met the Deputy First Minister to talk about their experiences of racism somehow this is the exact same recommendation or near enough identical recommendation to the recommendation that was put forth by the expert ethnicity group that being of course to incorporate black history in our curriculum <laughs> and this of course all came in the back of fentanyl floyd and the shit show that occurred after the fact with their mostly peaceful protest across the pond i Race Equality and Education Stakeholder Network Group has been established with the centre aims of identifying measures which will address race inequality which remains evident in schools. What do you mean it remains evident in schools? Oh, that's right, a lack of black teachers in Scotland and, of course, disparities. <laughs> Working with marginalised groups and individuals to ensure that young people from all BAME backgrounds who experience race inequality have their voices heard and can feed into the decision-making and implementation of this group's objectives. You know. <laughs> Okay. Advising on potential changes in practice and also on concrete short, medium and long term actions to support the desired outcomes. The desired outcomes. Whose desired outcomes is the question we should all be asking here. Which is that as a result of an anti-racist approach and a culture of racial literacy amongst all school staff and pupils. Mm -hmm. The group will be a, an action and outcomes focused one examining the key drivers of systemic race inequality in schools. How barriers which still exist can be removed and how good practice can be built upon. <laughs> wow. Are we talking about fringe ideas here? No longer are we talking about ideas that belong nowhere, bar, and no, 
not to a point now where not only is this sort of rhetoric becoming commonplace, normalised and a political consensus across the parliament, but it's also becoming the rhetoric that the Scottish government themselves espouse. <laughs> so they've adopted the same talking points as the anti-racists. Which should be a call for concern for everybody in Scotland, especially if you're a parent. Bear in mind, this document here is not a PDF that I've downloaded from the Anti-Racist Educator or any of the other education websites, quote-unquote education websites, of an anti-racist nature. No, 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 no. This is from Education Scotland, slash the Scottish Government, co-signed, rubber-stamped by the Scottish Government, and they're talking about internalised racism, institutional racism, and structural racism. I'm talking about these things as if they're fucking real refers to the economic, political, social and cult cultural structures, actions and beliefs that s <laughs> systemize an unequal distribution of privilege, resources and safety and power in favour of the dominant racial group. So I get <laughs> Same with the feminist BS, it's no different to this. You know, there's the subtle uh, references, indications that this is all about power imbalances. So we need to redistribute that power. A race equality and anti-racist education. Two interconnected concepts related to race equality education have been highlighted by Rowena Ashrad. One concept considers race equality as an outcome measure assessing whether gaps related to attainment and achievement have been reduced or eliminated. The second concept refers to a moral imperative to educate all learners so that they do not discriminate on the basis of race. Educate all learners. Yeah. In other words present these children with an ideology in order for them to in time see the world through the same lines that the anti-racists see the world. More recently, the term anti-racist education is used to describe learning that works proactively to prevent and challenge racism that exists within our society. Race equality in education, or race equality education, sorry, therefore needs to support an educational experience where every child and young person flourishes and succeeds in an environment which actively promotes equality and tackles racism. You know, and we will never be able to achieve what they claim is equality when you look at how they define equality. You know, it's all about those disparities, etc. As opposed to things being equal in terms of law and whatnot. There's nothing in Scotland that holds back BAME specifically for the fact that they're BAME. But disparities would tell you otherwise, according to these people. Why are race equality and anti-racist education necessary? Anti-racist education empowers children and young people to engage in an increasingly diverse and globalised world where people can be united by their common humanity and enhanced by their diversity. It empowers learners to develop an understanding of their own values, beliefs and cultures of those and those of others. Anti-racist education helps children to understand and realise their own rights and the rights of others within the school, within their community and globally. Anti-racist education helps learners to understand the harmful consequences of racism and to actively challenge it wherever it occurs. It helps to ensure that the learning environment is safe and inclusive without racial inequality or racism. <laughs> oh God. It nurtures a historically literacy, a historical literacy in learners, which helps them to understand all of Scotland's history, including our historical role in colonialism, empire, and transatlantic slavery, and the diversity of Scottish past. It helps learners understand how Scotland's colonial past plays a role in the current everyday lives, acknowledging the success and impact of uh, minority ethnic historical figures in relation to Scottish and global history. Race equality education provides a vehicle for all practitioners to demonstrate their professional values and the Equality Act give, gives the duty to schools and local authorities to eliminate unlawful discrimination, harassment and victimisation of learners with protected characteristics and it just so happens that there is no such thing as unlawful victimisation and discrimination that exists in the present day. The Equality Act was created in order to ensure that these things do not occur. The Equality Act was not created in order to ensure that these things eh, are eradicated. <laughs> you know, I love how that's worded there. And to advance the quality of opportunity between people who, who share a protected characteristic and those who do not, and to foster good relations between them. Curriculum for Excellence is intended to support children and young people to gain the knowledge, skills and attributes needed for life in the 21st century. You know, I love when they do this all the time, they make a reference to Agenda 21 by the way, including skills for learning, life and work. The purpose of Curriculum for Excellence is often summarised as supporting children and young people to become successful learners, confident individuals, responsible citizens and effective contributors. You know, Race equality and anti-racist education recognises that our 21st century learners exist in a multicultural, multi-faith and global community and as such need to develop as global citizens. <laughs> in other words, socially engineer the youth in order for them to embrace this ever increasingly diverse world. Um, and how it impacts on our world and how to overcome it. 
helping to develop intercultural competencies, the attitudes, skills and knowledge needed to interact positively and confidently with people whom we may perceive to be different from us in some way. Um, the term curriculum is understood to be all learning that's planned for children and young people throughout their education and not only what happens in the classroom. Is Scotland fairer? Who gives a fuck? Um, obviously not, because disparities exist, bruh. Um, but then it also goes on to talk about, uh, briefly here, until society represents everyone, the questions will always be, where do I belong? Do I belong? Representation is vital because it provides the opportunity for your existence to be acknowledged in the world. Aisha Thomas. You know, if I went and moved to Pakistan, or India even, and decided to live there for the rest of my life, that I would not be quote-unquote represented. But for some strange reason, these people that come here, whether they are born here or whether they have moved here from elsewhere, <laughs> they seem to complain that our society doesn't quote unquote represent them. They fail to fucking realise, forget, ignore the fact that they are essentially more or less visitors in our country. They're living in a country that is not only predominantly Scottish, but predominantly white and has always been that way. So it stands to reason that the quote unquote representation that they speak of is going to be near enough non-existent for people that look like her, irrespective of which bane she, she comes in. Anyway, uh, one of the most cancerous sentences in the entirety of this fucking document. We need, in order to have a curriculum that represents everybody, we need to normalise diversity. Yeah. It's here that the 2002 Maastricht Global Education Declaration defines global education as an education that opens people's eyes and minds to the realities of the world and awakens them to bring about a world of greater justice, equity and human rights for all. Equity and justice. Words that you're hearing more and more and more frequently these days, but they're promoting these concepts to children. Global citizenship education is a vital aspect of Scotland's cross-curricular approach to learning for sustainability, of course. Sustainable Development Goals, Agenda 2030. It encourages individuals to think deeply and critically about what is equitable and just. <laughs> so and essentially what they're doing here is they, they are politicising children from a young age to see the world through the progressive lens. Minimise harm to our planet. <laughs> By extension, that's uh, obviously talking about man-made climate change, so they're promoting that shit to kids as well, as everybody's aware of. Exploring global citizenship themes helps learners grow more confident in standing up for their beliefs and more skilled in evaluating the ethics and the impacts of their decisions. Through this process of better understanding how our choices and actions have repercussions for people and their communities locally and globally. There are clear synergies between global citizenship and anti-racist education. Global citizenship asks us to interrogate our assumptions and bias, recognising that we interpret the world through our specific social context. The process of unlearning and development of critical literacy skills helps learners recognise and understand the challenge of discrimination and inequality, critically exploring the language used to describe refugees in the media, for example. Now, there's currently a website that's uh, in development, so to speak, uh, that kind of incorporates a lot of what that document I just had on screen entails, as well as a lot of the other anti-racist talking points. Um, and of course, one of the talking points in this regard is developing global citizenship or developing global citizens even and um, they've got a little bit of blurb there but when you come down to their links in terms of resources that you can go and view this, this will bring you to scott deck a plethora of different resources and um, our practical classroom resources for every level which support active global citizenship so we got issue to maths a uh, issue to action maths and they go on to say global uh, issues provide a rich and real life context for applying what is learned in maths. The series of lessons uses the issues of gender inequality, climate change and migration as a context for developing core math skills. Uh, modern languages, a uh, global citizenship approach to modern languages enables young people to gain insights into other ways of thinking, uh, etc. Issues to action, English, poetry, stories and biographies connect young people to their lived experiences of climate change and migration in this collection of English lessons. So I decided to have a little issues to action uh, the English one, uh, just in this instance, to give you a bit of insight as to how they're subtly promoting global citizenship in a classroom setting, normalising all the socially engineered changes to our society. So you're provided with uh, several PowerPoints and PDFs to download, and uh, for some strange reason the uh, PowerPoints aren't working on the laptop, but they seem to work on my phone, so I've just screenshot uh, a couple of segments from the powerpoints the teacher would present this to the class 
uh, and it would it would go as followed. You are now going to fill out a survey to gauge your opinions on the idea of labelling people and the way we tend to sort people into groups. It might be helpful to think about how we use terms like asylum seeker or left wing, right wing or LGBM to TQ or elderly or immigrant, anything that involves grouping and labelling people. Be completely honest in your answers and no talking while you complete this so you don't influence others' answers. And then it goes on to say here uh, that in your inquiry groups, each group has been given a word to think about. On your note making sheet, use a dictionary to help you come up with the definition for the term you've been given. Do try to explain it in your own words though. Right? Blah, blah, blah. And it says here that um, biography writing. Sometimes it is people who have had difficult lives who have, who have the most interesting stories to tell. Choosing your subject. Our focus will be on people who have been forced to migrate from their country to another. So already, you know, they're already normalising the concept of immigration slash refugee status slash asylum status, etc. Normalising it, of course, from the perspective of the anti-racist and the Scottish government as well, where any individual who turns up on Scottish shorelines is by default fleeing persecution and war. And you've already, you already have an idea of who you would like to research. No, you may already have an idea of who you might you might not see the help sheet for some suggestions. Although there are many historical examples you could choose from, for this task we will stick to people who are currently living. Uh, doing your own research. Once you've chosen the person you would like to write about, you will need to carry out some research. You can look online, use newspapers or magazine articles, etc. You should at least you should use at least three different sources for this. Storytelling, essentially, where it says here that they're going to conduct an interview. So the classes are going to conduct hypothetical interviews. Then you need to choose a label that we might apply to someone. Old immigrant, LGBM, and an interview a person who might be labelled in this way. You will design interview questions to find out more about the person behind the label. You will make an audio recording of your, your interview, eh, whether that be via phone, iPad, etc. And all the interviews will be gathered in a collection of stories to show that by labelling someone, we might miss out on finding out more about them as an individual. <laughs> it's quite remarkable that we're, these children are being taught these things by the very same group of people that have created these labels to begin with, you know? So, of course, it's relatively self-explanatory what's uh, occurring here. You know, all these activities that they have created that are to be introduced in our in English lessons, for example, they will incorporate and include all of the progressive talking points under the sun when it comes to immigration and asylum status, as well as normalising all the different groups within society and getting you to think empathetically about all these different little marginalised groups across society. Yeah. Then we've got the issue to action English resource booklet as well, um, which is this here. Down on page four of this document, it says here that this, this resource was produced by teachers as part of the Global Issues and Global Subjects Project, a collaborative project across 10 European countries with the aim of providing materials, training and support for global citizenship through an overarching theme of dealing with controversial global issues and, of course, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. <laughs> so, oh, wow, what a shock. Uh, the project has worked with secondary teachers to produce a suite of a uh, suite of sorry of resources featuring activities and lesson ideas to bring global citizenship to life in English, math, science, and modern languages. Citizenship education is a way of living that recognises our world in an increasingly complex web of connections and interdependencies. It is one in which our choices and actions may have repercussions for people and the communities both locally, and nationally, and internationally. All right. Okay. Mm. In reference to the Sustainable Development Goals, it says that education plays a central role in achieving the targets of the SDGs. Securing young people's entitlement for learning, to learning sorry, for sustainability within the curriculum will enable us to meet target 4.7. Within the resource, we reference which of the 17 goals is most connected to the lesson or activity to induce your... Right, okay. Why English with a global citizenship approach? Right. <laughs> We want to encourage learners to explore diverse identities and cultures, think critically about their place in the world, build relationships and live positively with those around them. A global citizenship approach to English develops learners' empathy, respect for diversity and imagination, and to recognise their place in local, national and global communities. It also expands learners' thinking and horizons while developing critical literacy skills and improving levels of attainment. I want to make reference to any novels or poetry that uh, the teachers in question will potentially be sharing with their pupils uh, and they want them to question whether or not there's uh, any diversity included. <laughs> Is there any diversity amongst the writers? Is gender, ethnicity and sexuality reflected? Ah, oh, fuck's sake. 
like, ugh, just cancer, it really is. And they've got a little segment here for the teachers to present to their pupils, of course. Why do people leave home? So again, this is sort of normalising the concept of uh, asylum seeking and migration and all the rest of it. The aim, of course, of this activity to develop knowledge and understanding of why someone might migrate, to develop group discussion skills. Uh-huh. Um, any reasons why people leave their home and might feel forced to migrate to another country? These are push factors. Ask people to think about what factors would force them to leave home. Use the push factor cards that they should rank them into a, a diamond nine, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. And then, of course, they've got their examples of push factor cards. Things along the lines of war with another country, persecution, a sudden natural disaster, limited access to education and poor job prospects, um, persecution due to sexuality, etc. Migration and issue three. The aims being to measure knowledge and understanding of the key issues within forced migration. All in all, of course, that's just one of many examples of them sort of introducing these uh, the issues of our time, shall we say. Many of which are socially engineered, of course. But uh, presenting these things to children and teenagers alike, but doing so from the angle of how the progressives would want you to see uh, these issues, whether that be... Uh, Migration. Nobody comes to Scotland claiming asylum falsely, under false pretenses, chancing their fucking arm. No, 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 no. Nonetheless, I do realise that this video has sort of diverged onto uh, global citizenship slash learning for sustainability as opposed to uh, talking about anti-racist education. But as I said, it's not really something that I, I can really add any additional points to. It's something that I've talked about uh, a multitude of times before. I, more than ever, uh, more attention needs to be brought to it. <laughs> it's just ideal if you could share the links below uh, about because it's about time that uh, the anti-racist programs that are being implemented behind the scenes under everybody's nose uh, garner a bit more attention attention that quite frankly uh, they deserve for all the wrong reasons and I love this as well just to finish off um, this is the event that they had over the course of the last week celebrating neurodiversity Networking for our neurodivergent workforce, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> an opportunity to come together and discuss the highs and lows of being neurodivergent or a neurodivergent educator in the UK, right? And definition for neurodiversity or neurodivergent. Differing in mental or neurological function from what is considered typical or normal, right? <laughs> but that's not the kicker. That's not the kicker of this at all. No, 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 no. In reference to the neurodivergent trope that they've coined for themselves, Melina, whatever her second name is, one of the founders of the anti-racist uh, educator, as well as one of the figureheads for this uh, racial literacy program, she tweets the following, Such a privilege to support a safer, braver, uh, braver space for neurodivergent educators to connect. My favourite quote so far is, we are not the disorders, society is the disorder. So let me get this straight. You are boldly and proudly uh, labelling yourself neurodivergent, which is defined as being sort of somewhat abnormal, different to the norm. But yet, and yet, despite that fact, you insist that it's society that is the issue and not yourself. Hmm. I beg to fucking differ. Peace.